My biggest money mistakes have been when I've reacted emotionally. Maybe I've read something in the news that led me to sell something before my thesis had changed about the company or the product. Anytime you react emotionally, there's a higher likelihood that you'll end up making a mistake. I'm Vlad Tenev, and I'm gonna tell you how I learned about money and how to spend money. Let's do it. My family and I immigrated to America when I was a small child. Both of my parents worked. I spent a lot of time growing up on my computer. This was in the mid to, to late 90s. We didn't have cable television, but we did have a family computer with a 56K modem. So I created a virtual portfolio on Yahoo Finance. I was tracking my stocks. I got really into it. I would tell my parents my progress and, and show them my portfolio from time to time. And, and they saw, well, wait a minute, this kid's doing quite well at this stuff. And at the time I was trying to get into a selective summer program where you basically do a year's worth of math classes in a couple of weeks. One of the things you had to do to get into this math program was to do well on the SAT. And my parents, they had this idea that if I got over a, a 1300, which would be a pretty good score, they would give me money to invest in. And I don't think they, they thought that I would actually do this, but I ended up getting a 1370 on the SAT as a seventh grader. Of course, this was in the heyday of, of stock investing and I ended up making some mistakes and ended up losing some of that money, but that actually got me on what's been a lifelong journey of learning about the markets, learning about investing and, and getting better and better every single year. I remember the first extravagant purchase that I made was a really nice sectional sofa. It was extra deep. You could kind of sleep on it and lounge on it. It was very comfortable. The kids loved it. And actually I still have it to this day, it's, uh, it's still my favorite couch. I, I was raised with sort of an apprehensions about, about going into debt. It was all like pay for everything in cash, make sure you never go into debt. And as a result, I was actually a renter up until fairly recently. I mean, a, a few years ago, we, we actually bought a house. And in hindsight, I think that if I had gotten into real estate, even maybe had a mortgage a little bit earlier, I would have been able to take advantage of the historically low interest rates and the appreciation that the real estate market has seen over the past few years. I started Robinhood because as an immigrant from Bulgaria, which was a country that in, in the 90s saw its financial system collapse, I grew up with a deep appreciation of what it means to, to live in America, a country that has a very stable currency and a vibrant and powerful financial system that in many ways is the envy of the world. You know, the, the world's best companies list here, they're publicly traded and available for investors to participate in. What we saw was that if you're a high net worth individual and you have quite a bit of money or you're an institution, you have access to great tools and really high quality access to the markets. The rest of us didn't. And so we built a tool in Robinhood whose idea was that every advantage that the big guys get, we should make available to everyone. I was essentially a graduate student meeting my, my living expenses with my grad student salary. So it wasn't really until I started Robinhood that I was able to use the product that I built to actually become a more serious investor. That was one of the really special things about building the company and the product. It was a need that, that I had, and I actually learned quite a bit about investing and about finance through continuing to refine the product that I'd built. Growing up, my grandfather would always tell me, if you have to remember one thing, it's try to spend less than you earn. 
every single month. And my grandfather was a doctor in the Navy uh, in Bulgaria, and they didn't have access to the ability to invest. He would basically take his money and use it to buy copper cookware, pots and pans, and that was his way of investing. So I grew up with the appreciation very early that thinking about investing, thinking about diversification is a way to protect the money that you've built up and the nest egg that you've saved for, for your retirement and for your future. I think the, those formative things led me to eventually being interested in it as, as a child and, and kind of maintained that passion as I grew up and led me to where I am today. I think the most common mistake is selling too early, you know, reacting to something in the news, letting your emotions get in the way and trying to time the market. When for most people, unless your fundamental view about the economy or a particular company changes, they shouldn't change their strategy. Weeks ago, I got this uh, bag of magnesium bath salts off of Amazon. I think it was $25 or something. If you haven't taken a magnesium bath, it's just a very nice way to de-stress and relax after a, a hard day of work or a hard workout. I have a family with small children and my favorite thing is just to travel with them and, and show them different parts of the world. I think one thing that's very important that a lot of people don't get is that it's much more powerful the earlier you start. It's almost more important to start early than to start with a large amount of money. So a lot of people in America don't invest until they're in their 40s or 50s. If we could just get people to begin the habit of it earlier, compounding is, is this magical force. That's this very powerful idea that you can start with something very small, a small amount of money, and then add to it slowly over time. And a few decades later, that could turn into a sizable nest egg for, for your retirement. That's really sort of like the, the secret behind investing in wealth creation. I grew up as a single stock investor. I would invest in companies that I know, companies that make products that I use. And what I realized over time is that diversification is actually incredibly important because even though it might be not as exciting, it helps you protect the investments that you've made and protects you against downside scenarios. And ultimately, uh, if done well, helps you sleep better at night. And I think over the long run, that becomes more and more important. Start as young as possible and just keep doing it. Keep getting better every day. Thanks for watching. Now you know my secrets to investing and financial wellness.